Hi there. So in this session, uh, we're going to dive into performance a little bit and, and speak about um, what really translates to high performance as it pertains to uh, health and well-being and uh, the physical body and, and, and kind of the correlation uh, in terms of the, the inner game, right, and, and how those two things relate to each other. Because there's the inner game that has to get dialed in, our emotional, uh, mental game uh, that has to be dialed in, in concert with the physical. And sort of what, what should that relationship look like um, in order to achieve optimal performance? And, and I find that a lot of times for people, when it comes to performing optimally with the body, uh, is it really breaks down in, in the very beginning, right? Before they ever begin doing anything, because their relationship to what they're doing is, is kind of setting one up uh, to not achieve the outcome that, that they're aspiring to. And so if we think about the physical body, so many people are motivated inherently in the beginning uh, by kind of by, by a couple of key things, right? A lot of times it's physique focused, right? I want to look a certain way, um, and that's motivating somebody to take action, to eat differently or work out or things of this nature. And although there's nothing wrong with that, um, that focus by itself, if it works, it works short term. And then we're done, right? We go right back to where we, where we started, where we now we, we lose a bunch of weight, we gain a bunch of weight, right? Um, and so sometimes it's like, hey, man, I, I got to get the beach body because I'm going to be in my bathing suit soon and summer's coming up. So we starve ourselves and work out really hard so we look okay. And then, you know, once summer passes, it's all over. Or, or maybe somebody's, you know, uh, get, gets in shape for, for an event, like a wedding or something like this. Um, the second thing that, that people tend to do in the beginning is they go too aggressive, right? As opposed to thinking about, what is the lifestyle I want to adopt that translates to the outcome that I aspire to? It's I got to have it now, and they are as aggressive as you can be around getting a result, right? They, they go from not working out, you know, to all of a sudden training two, three times a day and eating perfectly seven days a week, and that lasts, you know, two to six weeks. Um, and although they may see some results, it's just not, it's just not sustainable from a routine perspective, because in terms of just how the brain works, it, it requires a tremendous amount of energy to adopt a new habit and or routine, um, and it requires very little energy to maintain uh, a routine that we've, we've already established. And so instead of going into um, you know, training or, or looking to produce an outcome with the idea of it needs to happen as fast as possible, and having a focus on physique alone, uh, I, would, I would encourage something very different, right? So, so first, you know, you got to get clear uh, why you're, you're driving whatever it is you're driving in the first place in order for it to be sustainable, in order to, to motivate ourselves to action. And so I'm not saying that you can't have, uh, uh, you know, aspiring to a certain kind of physique as part of your motivation. You absolutely can. That's fine. It just can't be the only thing. The more you can connect um, performance in the body and tie that to lifestyle, the, the more likely you are to succeed. And so if you ask yourself the question, you know, what's really important to me uh, that my body is necessary for in life? What are the most important things in life that, that I enjoy doing or that I want to do, okay, um, that's dependent on the body? What are those things? And what I find is the things that motivate people tend to be stuff like, I want to keep up with my grandkids. Uh, I want to I be able to, when I travel, be able to walk around the city and, and be able to explore. Um, I want to feel good for as long as possible. I want to stay out of the disease phase, and I want to just feel great. I want to be you know, healthy and vibrant throughout my life because that's going to translate to a quality of life. Um, some people enjoy activity. So what are the activities that you love doing that you're not going to be able to do if you don't maintain physical wellness at a, at a certain level? Is it skiing? Is it mountain biking? Do you, do you like to hike? Do you like to run? Do you like to play tennis? Do you like to play golf? Like, what are the things you love to do? Because if you connect to the love for things or you connect to what's truly important in your life, and now you think about, uh, you know, exercise or training, um, you're going to be a lot more motivated to train because when you go to train, you realize that it's making a difference in your life, but you're putting those two things together from a neurological perspective, right? And so, you know, when you, when you think about that, 
hey, what is the thing that I have access to because I'm training, right? What is training making possible for me? And, you know, name the things you love, right? Um, name the things that you want to make sure you can keep doing. Uh, on the other side, you could name a few things that you want to avoid. I want to avoid getting sick. I, I want to be mobile, so I don't want to be confined to a wheelchair. Uh, I don't want to, you know, come down with cancer, and maybe that runs in my family a little bit. You can have some of those things as motivations, but I always encourage, you know, expansive motivation. And so when you're focusing on, on movement or, or exercise, you really want to focus on uh, what are the things that are going to be made possible for me. And that really is the inner game. The inner game is what is my relationship to the action that I'm looking to take. Uh, if we don't dial our relationship to the action first, then we set ourselves up to fail right from the beginning, not even realizing that we've done that, okay? And so when you're looking at, at taking action, like let's say I'm not working out at all, you want to name why you're doing it in the first place, right? So that's your big question is, you know, why am I training, right? And the two levers uh, primarily that you're going to pull around health and vitality uh, or optimal performance in terms of performing at a high level like an athlete or something, it's really the same thing, is uh, physical training and nutrition. Like, those are your two levers. So you've got to know why am I exercising? Why am I training? And the other question is, you know, why uh, am I eating this way? Right? Now, we can get very detailed with these two questions, but this is the start. I just wanted, wanted, want you to look at the beginning. So if you have uh, a training plan in mind or you have a physical goal that you want to achieve, ask yourself, why am I training? If your answer is because I want to lose weight, that's not enough. If your answer is I want to look good, that's not enough. It's fine to want to lose weight. It's fine to want to look good. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to get clear, what is the lifestyle reason behind why you're training? Hey, man, I'm training so that I have health and vitality for the rest of my life. I'm training so that I can do what I do for a living for as long as possible because I, wanna, I, I love to work, right? I'm doing what I'm doing because I want to spend time, quality time with my family and with my young, young children or, or grandchildren for as long as possible. And so I want to make sure that I'm fit and I'm healthy so that I can enjoy the people in my life for as long as possible. I'm training so that I don't become dependent on my family and, and become a burden on them. I don't want to be a burden on the people I love and care about, so I'm going to make sure I, I train so that that doesn't happen. Um, maybe you are an athlete, and maybe you're competing in something, and it's like, man, why am I training? So I can be the best you know, uh, you know, baseball player in the world. So I can you know, be the best football player in the world. So I can be the best uh, downhill skier in the world, right? It's like maybe... Maybe you have a passion and your training is tied to your career right now and, and there's some motivation there for you. Okay, we'll get clear on why you're doing it. Like what is the reason for, for executing this way, right? Maybe it means something uh, to, to your family. Like, hey, I'm showing my family what's possible. I'm showing my kids that they can live their dream because I'm performing at the highest levels in the world at X, Y, Z, um, you know. Uh, uh, athletics or, or sport or something like this, okay? Like, what, what, is the, what is the why? Man, I just want to live life fully. I love, you know, uh, I don't know, surfing. And I just want to live my passion out. And if I'm not at, at, in top condition and shape, I can't surf the way I want to, right? I don't know what it is for you, but you've got to check in and ask the question, why am I training in the first place? And you've got to check in and literally, like, like close your eyes and go, wow, do I, do I feel an emotional response when I name that why? For most people, uh, losing weight and looking good are not going to stimulate that emotional energy that you need to harness uh, to get yourself to take action in a sustainable long-term way, okay? So what are those other reasons for why you're training in the fir first place? What are those lifestyle reasons? My two big reasons why I still train today um, in the way that I do is, is my career. I want to make sure I make a difference and I give back, and I have a very physically demanding job today where I travel sometimes week after week after week, and I'm on stage for you know, anywhere between you know, 10 and, and 15 hours straight in a, in, a, in a day, and I'll do that three, five days straight, um, and then you know, have to do it again the very next week. And so that requires a lot of stamina, 
a lot of endurance, a lot of strength. Um, the other key why that I, that I have for why I train today the way I do, which is, which is pretty aggressive at a high level, um, is because it's required to do the activities that I love, right? I love, you know, skiing at a high level. Um, you know, I like uh, mountain biking aggressively. Um, I love trail running. Like, just the things I enjoy doing as activities in the way that I do them requires, um, you know, to me to be in a pretty... Uh, in, a, in, a, in a really good in, in a really good condition, do I enjoy having a nice physique? Sure, but that isn't what actually drives my action. Right, the inner game is really the reason uh, I'm doing it in the first place. Okay, and then on the fear-based side, which I don't focus on a lot, is you know I think about being well, you know, until I'm 90 and and, and I'm 100, and I think about. You know, I kind of had my, my grandfather and I had a mentor in my life who were about the same age when I was a teenager. And my grandfather died of emphysema and I saw, you know, a, a decline at a very young age, especially for today. You know, your, your early 60s is very young today. And so to be incapable and not, not able to walk, not able to breathe and, you know, in, in, a, in a sickness spiral uh, when you're in your young 60s, like when I think about that, I'm like, man, I'm going to get up and work out, right? Um, when I think about on the other side of it, I think about a martial arts master I had at the time who was in his 60s, he'd wake up at 6 a.m. and he'd teach martial arts class and he could kick over his head and he was extremely healthy and dynamic at the exact same age. And so when I look at those representations of those two people in my life, I'm like, man, I want to be like that when I'm 60. And there are certain things that if I do them today, I make that much more possible you know, than, than if I'm doing other things, right? Uh, and so why are you training in the first place? And you got to tie that same why to, hey, man, why am I following this nutrition plan? Why am I eating this way? And so your inner game starts with why. Why am I doing this, okay? What is the reason that, that, that I'm exercising in the first place? Why am I training in the first place? And then the second component is, you know, why am I eating this way? Like, why am I eating these foods? And why am I not eating those foods? Like, what is that going to mean for me in a real practical way? You know, for me, uh, when I think about eating things I know don't make me feel good, sugar and, you know, breads and, you know, all the things we all sort of know we shouldn't be eating. And if we don't know, we can educate ourselves about those things, you know, but it really is as simple as, is how do I want to feel tomorrow? Like, I'll ask myself this question frequently, which is, hey, if I eat this tonight, how am I going to feel tomorrow morning? Is that the way I want to feel? And it's like, do I want to feel lethargic? Do I want to feel sick? Do I want to feel foggy? Do I want to feel irritable? Because there's such a, an emotional connection to, you know, emotional reality tied to what we eat that we often don't pick up on. Like, if, if we eat a lot of sugar and our insulin's all over the place, we become irritable. We become anxious, right? That's where hangry comes from, that term hangry, right? It's like our blood sugar is dropping and we get a lot more irritable, right? And you don't believe that that's a thing. Like, like just go to a restaurant, a busy restaurant at dinner time and watch how people behave when they're waiting for their table a little longer than expected and they start getting hungry, right? All of a sudden, it's like, what is going on in this place? Um, and it's because, there, you know, although it's not the whole picture, there is a connection to what do we eat and our ability to manage emotion, right? So from an energy perspective, from, from a mental fatigue and mental clarity perspective, uh, from an emotional perspective, I'll, I'll go, hey, I want to feel great, and if I eat X, I'm going to feel that way. And if I eat Y, I'm not going to feel that way. And so I don't really focus on my physique because what's important to me today and tomorrow is, is how am I going to feel when I go through my day, right? And then these two things start playing off each other when you actually start working out. So like a lot of times now I go, man, how do I want to feel tomorrow when I work out and I'm with my trainer? And it's like if I eat this, that is going to be a challenging session. I'm not going to feel good. Whereas if I don't eat this and I eat something a bit healthier, I'm actually going to enjoy my workout because I'm going to feel better as I, as, I, as I execute, okay? So the point is, it start, the inner game starts with these two questions. Why am I training in the first place? And why am I eating this way? Why am I following this nutritional plan? If you have a strong why, then, then you're unstoppable. If you have a strong why, now all you need to do is be equipped with the right method and, and the right action plan, the right training routine, and the right knowledge around what to eat and what not to eat, which I understand can be tricky, but it's easier to dial that in and find that information today than, than it is, you know, how do, I, how do I manage this inner game? And so um, think about the inner game as leveraging your emotions in such a way 
that you can motivate yourself to take action and follow the plan. And then the second component is the external, right? And so it's like, this is the internal. The external is, uh, hey, I'm going to train, you know, five days a week. And, and, and here's what I'm going to do on those days. And here's when I'm going to do them. Our ability to show up for this depends on this over here. Our ability to show up and actually train five days a week and do that week after week after week after week after week is dependent on our why and our motivation to do it. And then, you know, why am I eating this way? Same thing, nutrition plan. You gotta have a clear plan that you're gonna follow and you've gotta have the plan and know what you're doing before you execute. If I wake up tomorrow and I go, I'm gonna work out today, now what am I gonna do? I, I spend my time thinking about what I'm gonna do. I'm not sure what to do. I feel overwhelmed. And then I do nothing at, th at the end of the day. And then, you know, that repeats, that repeats, that repeats. If you know, even if it's simple, and I always tell people, start simple, especially if you don't have a routine, don't feel like you need to work out two hours a day, five days a week. That sets you up for failure. Rather than that, go, hey, I'm going to train five days a week. And what I'm going to do is Monday through Friday, I'm going to take weekends off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up and I'm going to walk for 30 minutes from 9 a.m. to 9.30. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to wake up, I'm going to walk 30 minutes Monday through Friday. Get up and just execute that walk for 30 minutes. You do that for three or four weeks, then make it an hour. Now what you've done is you've created the hour where you're going to train yourself. You've established a routine, and now you can start getting dynamic. You can go, hey, I want to be stronger in the body. I'm going to hire a, 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 a top physical trainer uh, to coach me on how to lift weights and get stronger and build strength, right? You know what? I want to be able to run. I want to build endurance. Okay, I'm going to find somebody or I'm going to follow, uh, find a plan out there that's going to show me how to build endurance and, and make sure uh, I have more energy in that regard. And then once you have the hour of day established, you can start getting fancy and plan all kinds of different workout routines and, 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 and strive for different goals and outcomes and, and all of that. But, but really where it all begins is from a lifestyle perspective, let's get inside the dynamic that sets us up to succeed. Let's leverage the inner game so that we execute the routine. Okay? Let's uh, position the inner game so that, it, so that we execute our routine consistently over time. And then same thing with nutrition plan. Have the plan before you execute on what you're going to follow. Uh, have a little meal plan and just start with like one meal a day, breakfast, male breakfast, and what you're going to have for breakfast, you know, five days a week. And then, and then show up for that each day, each day, each day, each day. And then once you're in the routine, then add something. And so understand you're going to accomplish a lot more if, if once a month you go, you know what, this is January, so I'm going to uh, really nail, I'm just going to walk, you know, five days a week, I'm going to do an hour. That's what I'm going to do for the month of January. And you just nail that, and you make sure you train this relationship. Because if you harness this, you'll be able to get yourself to do anything you want over here. If you master your inner reality here, motivating oneself to take action, doesn't matter what the action is, you can motivate yourself to take any action. Okay, and so put your primary focus here and then just take a micro step here. Now, walking, you know, a half hour a day doesn't seem like much or walking an hour a day doesn't seem like much. But if that's what you do all of January and then come February, you just keep doing that and you add one thing and you go, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to now eat breakfast and I'm going to I'm going to eat a healthy breakfast. And you nail that in February and then March, you do lunch and then April, you do dinner. And then May, you start doing a high-intensity workout two times a week, and you keep walking the other three days a week. Well, you're not even halfway through the year yet, and you've developed a lifestyle routine that's going to completely redefine your, your physical health, your vitality, your well-being, um, and you're not even halfway through the year, okay? And so don't try to go out of the gate and sprint to win the race because basically you're going you're gonna to burn out. You're going to go hard. You might even get some really great results for a period of time, and then you just quit and you go back to where you were or worse, right? And none of us want that. We all want uh, a maintained uh, uh, you know, physique and, and, and wellness, um, as opposed to I hit a mark, and then most of the time I don't feel good or, or, or I'm not in the kind of condition that I want to be in. And so take the approach as what is the thing I can execute on and then I feel confident that I can stick to it. 
because if you just kind of create the momentum and allow that compounding effect to take over, not only will you create the outcome that you, that you want to strive for and get a result better than you think is possible, but more importantly, you're, you're going to have that result and you're going to answer to that 10 years from now. So hopefully this is helpful around a, uh, you know, in a little adjustment in terms of perspective, how you can relate to the journey a little bit differently so you, sell, you know, set yourself up to succeed and fundamentally get sustainable results uh, in a way you haven't before. Enjoy. <laughs>